Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on Crypto. Hope you're having a good one. Oh, so that eventful. Um, we do have some CPI numbers that are going to come out this week, so that's to pay attention to. But let's dig into this whole Gemini situation. Um, last Monday, I reported that Gemini had given an ultimatum to the team over at DCG over the whole Gen Genesis debacle. Well, they gave them 72 hours. That 72 hours has come and gone, and Gemini is absolutely bringing a case against uh, DCG Group. I think that's going to bring pressure to DCG's liquidity, as well as could have an effect on their current portfolio of companies that they hold. So we'll see how that actually plays out. Um, we've got more whining from the International Monetary Fund. They're saying, which what, the first thing that they're saying could actually be a really good thing, which is taxes you know tax systems must be adjusted to account for digital assets yep got it not a problem bring some clarity you know bring some how to's all that good stuff kind of standardized things okay i can see that um but they're blaming um decentralized exchanges for the, for the inability to do that I, i'm just sitting there and just going um no that that that's a that's a power play statement that's all it is is a power play statement De centralized exchanges, oh, they they allow anonymity and blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. And I'm sitting back and I'm kind of going, um, no, that's not really why you're crying. You're crying because you can't control the, central, the decentralized exchanges. There's nobody to go after to run autonomously. I think that's their problem. That, that's just me, but I think that's what their real, what their real problem is. Something else that, that that came across the wires, which I am paying attention to, is the fact that um, Shiberium is going to launch in August. Okay, now the the idea of Shiberium launching in August, it's going to happen during the uh, blockchain futurist conference, and I think that's going to be a big deal. I think that's going to have a very impact. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see how that actually plays out. Just saying. See how it plays out. But I think it's going to be a really good thing. And I think the Shiba army is definitely praising the idea. Um, uh, Shatoshi Kiyos Kiyosama has been, um, you know, kind of teasing things. And now he just finally came out and said, this is when it's going to happen. I think that's a hugely positive thing for the metaverse. Chef's kiss to that. Um, I, I'm a big believer in the metaverse. You can just look at my profile and you can see. Um Something else that I'm paying attention to is this statement, not even a statement, and within court filings, the SEC um, said that Coinbase knew that they may have been breaking securities laws or violating securities laws. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying to myself, may, the operative word there is may. That means they didn't know. Right. They didn't know. Um, and, and some would say that, well, ignorance is not bliss you know, or laws on the books just because you didn't know does blah, 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 blah. But in this case, may is a big word because the SEC and Gary Gensler are known for their lack of clarity to the point of being outright evasive. Right there. Just that tells you everything that you need to know. So using the word may, well, Gary, if it's may, it's your fault. It's one thing if they knew. It's another thing if the, if the laws are actually on the books and people knew about it. But there are no, no laws that actually apply. It's, it's Gary Gensler's finger in the wind to see, well, which way is it blowing today? And that's what I'm going to do. Go down to Gary. You and your henchmen go pound sand and kick rocks with open toe shoes. Just saying. It, it, so tired of having the conversation about the lack of clarity from the SEC. A body that's supposed to bring nothing but clarity. Do your job. That's all I'm asking you to do is do your job. That's all I want. Um, Glassnode is saying that it's highly possible that an inflection point between U.S. entities purchasing Bitcoin and foreign entities purchasing Bitcoin, specifically Asia, could be an inflection point at the time of Black, uh, BlackRock applying for its Bitcoin spot ETF. And that is a very big deal, but we won't know until time has passed. But a, a 
point has happened at that moment. And we should see we'll we should see, you know, if that actually plays out. I think I find that to be very interesting. On that note, some lawyers are saying, listen, as companies acquire um as companies acquire Bitcoin or digital assets, you know, on mass in bulk, what they're saying is it would be very smart if the companies had to file a 13D. And in case you know, a 13D is like a, um, a 13D is a, is a document, is an application that you have to file if you purchase 5% or greater of a publicly traded company. It usually precludes, you know, usually precludes a, uh, a hostile takeover. But having something like a 13D for companies that hold a significant amount of digital assets, you know, a specific digital asset could be a very smart thing. And what my idea is, I'm looking at that and I'm going, that's actually good. Now, if you have an, if you have an effect on the over-the-counter market, because um, that's where a lot, of, and a lot of the large institutions are doing their deals. But if you if you acquire that much, you, you have a significant percentage, that could actually be a good thing. So I'm paying attention to that, and I think it's I think that really is a good thing. Um, something else that I'm paying attention to is Polygon Labs has anointed a new CEO. What's interesting is the timing. It was kind of a surprise to those outside of Polygon Labs where Ryan Wyatt, the current CEO and president, steps down. Um, but I find it interesting because the new CEO is the formal legal officer for Polygon Labs. And I think that could be a very shrewd move, like almost ridiculously shrewd. The reason why I say so is because in a world where regulatory compliance has become ridiculously litigious, just ask Binance, um, I think it could be a smart move having a CEO that's familiar with law, right? Because it'll enable you to better navigate everything that's going on. Something else to pay attention to is the deals that you're cutting right now are become, or are going to become more intense as far as contracts are concerned because of that regulatory environment. So I think that's a good move. I think that's a very smart move. And we'll see how it plays out, but I really do think that's a smart move. You know what we should do? We should look at the numbers. That's numbers. It really isn't much. Everything's kind of moving sideways, right? Um, there's not much. There really isn't much going on. I mean, Solana's moved 4% to the downside. Um, let's see. Is there anybody else here that's really, you know... Pepe's down 5% to the downside. Yeah, Bone is down 7%. Um, interesting because I think that movement has come previous to everybody knowing what's going on with uh, Shibarium's launch in, in August. So we'll see how that goes. I, I'm expecting it to be up, you know, come, you know, later today, tomorrow. Um, anything on the upside? There's nothing going on on the upside. So we can just... Is the Okay, the big board's not bad. Nah, there you go. Not bad. So, yeah, Bitcoin has been fighting to stay above 30,000. Above 30, Earlier this morning, it was at 30,100 and change. Um, it's good to see it at 30,200. But really, the number that we should be looking at for Bitcoin is 31,580. Every, everything else to me um, is just a lateral up and down, you know, that's going to happen within a short within a short frame, right? Um if I actually showed you what I'm looking at. How's that? How's that sound? All right, there you go. So the numbers that I'm looking at, you know, yeah, Bitcoin is, you know, fighting to stay above 30,000. Ethereum is fighting to stay above 1850. You know, you do have opportunities that are out there. But right now, I think we're just going to bounce you know, laterally where everything is right now. You can see there's 31,580. And every time we come close, we come back down. Come a little bit up, we come back down. Up down, up, down, up, significantly closer, but still back down. And this is kind of where we are. And I think we're going to continue continue to do that 
for a little while. Something that I'm paying attention to is, remember last week I said this week when SEC is supposed to meet with all the Bitcoin spot ETF filers. So we'll see what happens with that. That's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be a very interesting conversation if it actually happens, if it actually comes, you know, comes to be. Um, DeFi Lama, um, I believe that, yep, we are above a billion. I mean, it's not the most of a thing, it's only a couple of hundred. Um, so that's not a big deal. Um, right now, you do have the green effect of 56. Um, so that'll be a good thing. We'll see how the economy is doing. Um, and we'll see how it's going. Anyway, let me know. Cisco, Cisco, oh yeah, that's right. I almost forgot to mention this. Um, Cisco, Cisco, had FedNow, and so far my research has shown that FedNow has, XRP has nothing to do with FedNow. So you don't have to worry about it. It means nothing. Anyway, hope you have a good one. This is Eddie J on Crypto. Talk to you later.